The way I look at it, a, a team of people diagnosed what the problem was with me. A team of people took me through it and uh, I've now got a team of people helping me get, get my life back together. Something might be happening in your life, you, you just need that space to reflect. So this garden is a lovely space where you can be by yourself with your own thoughts. Parkland helps the community in, in masses of ways, mainly because it's a focal point to bring everybody together and that gave us a great opportunity to be the centre of our community, which is really important. We've been really, really pleased to get this funding. It's made such a difference. It's enabled us to sort of turbocharge, if you like, the work that we'd started to do. It's kind of taken the theory off the paper and turning that into a reality. So all the funding goes towards actually delivering the work that we want to deliver. Most of our projects are dedicated to creating performances or publications or recordings. We are empowering people through the performances and what they create. It's more than just racing, it's about being together as a community, it's about people striving to make something happen together. Uh, for me personally, it's transformed my life. This story is very much the same with many of our other paddlers. People's lives are transformed, they can't, don't almost recognise who they were from a few years ago. You know, it's, it's, you, you just can't explain the feeling that you get when you know you're making a difference to somebody's life. What a huge pleasure to be able to introduce our project launch fund. We're really excited because we've been able to invest 1.5 million pounds across our Leicester, Leicestershire and Rutland system and fund bright ideas that have actually come from our staff and our communities. This funding is to support NHS organisations and voluntary sector organisations to support with selecting those initiatives a project launch fund stakeholder panel was set up and we had representation from across all of our partner organisations. We actually approved 111 initiatives. What we were looking for as part of the project launch panel was how these projects and these bids met certain criteria. So that includes health inequalities, staff health and well-being, training and development, organisational development, patient experience. So we were looking for bids that met some or all of that criteria. We know that our staff are motivated, but in the past what they've lacked is a little bit of investment. And by giving that little bit of investment, we know it makes a huge difference. We know that micro-incivilities and bullying, harassment, harmful behaviours impact really negatively on people and also impact on our staff and the services that we're able to give. So this programme is all about preventing harmful behaviours. We're expecting the impact to be that we will create a group of connected individuals who are all passionate about being active bystanders. There'll be people who understand why people might behave badly and what the underpinning um, reasons for that might be. And then to be able to intervene in a compassionate but also effective way. And we really want to retain our staff and we want people to know and to feel that this is a great place to work and to receive care. So yeah, Chinese dragon boat racing is a traditional 2,000 year old sport which grew up from a festival in ancient China and it's now a sport that's worldwide. It has mixed teams so men and women uh, will compete together. We race in the boat together, we sit two abreast with a drummer at the front and a helms person sat at the back. It doesn't matter how strong you, you are, if you're going in time then you're part of the machine and you're making it work beautifully. When it's working well, it's an absolute beautiful thing to be part of. At the beginning of this year, I'd just come out of uh, a long term of cancer treatment and, and I'd lost half my weight. And it was a really low point in my, my life, it's probably the lowest that I've ever been. Slowly coming back from that, my wife spotted something in the local press, a thing called SOAR, which stands for Survivors on a River. 
Uh, and the idea behind that is to, is to get people who've had cancer back into a normal way of life. And, and I wasn't interested, I have to say. You know, I didn't want to do that. I didn't like the, the way I looked at the time. However, I, I came down to the open day and uh, there were so many people about and I was still hesitant, but I was made to feel so welcome here. I've never really looked back since then, I have to say. The, 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 the big family that we are here at Soaring has really helped me tremendously. And it just changes your mindset in a, in a massive way because the idea about being in the Dragon Boat is a mentality of it being a uh, we, not me mentality. So Bright Sparks Arts and Mental Health Group in general, we're dedicated to promoting positive perceptions of mental health through music, comedy, art and creative writing largely. The people we're looking for are people who um, experience severe and enduring mental health problems. So people, largely people who attend our groups have been um, inpatients within mental health units. I do DJing for Tim down here. Um, I used to come as a service user. Uh, now I'm working for Bright Sparks. I mean, it feels good. I mean, I'm helping pass on my skills to someone else and get people dancing and singing. We engage with a lot of homeless people, rough sleepers, but also people that are just really struggling financially. And we have like a huge mental health remit where, I mean, mental health is very prevalent within the homeless community and the disadvantaged community. We need to have avenues for people to engage and to, to kind of, to develop and to discover themselves and express themselves and be seen and have a voice. And that's what I love doing this kind of work, really. I'm in the fortunate position that I actually say to people, no, you are welcome. We want you to come. You might be on a secure unit and I'm inviting, I'm inviting those people. We look at creating an environment where people feel they belong, where people can develop alternative identities, singer or a songwriter or a poet, all positive identities, as compared to maybe mental health service users. Parkrun is a worldwide organisation that provides a free weekly timed 5k run, walk or jog every Saturday morning at 9 o'clock. As a school we felt it was really important to be putting something back into our local community and we have lots of runners at school, we have a running club based at the school so they train with lots of our pupils outside of school hours and our nearest park runs were 10 miles away in Bedworth or 11 miles away in Leicester and so there used to be two to three hundred people in Burbage every weekend travelling to those places by car so having a park run in Burbage means that rather than driving there they walk or run or cycle to our event, do the event and then walk, run or cycle home which is massively reducing the carbon footprint of park run as a, as a whole. And so today we've had people who've run very quickly, we've had people who've walked, it doesn't matter. And then at the end, lots of people come and have their cup of tea and a bit of cake or a cup of coffee and have that social time, that chat, that mental wellbeing time, which is, which is so important. So the funding that we've applied for for the park run is, it is run on grass. And the issue is gonna be as we get through into the winter, that the park run some weeks would have to be cancelled because the grass will not be suitable for 150 people to run on. So the funding we applied for was to part fund a path to go all the way around the field, which means our event can carry on no matter what the weather all year round. We're standing in the beautiful secret garden. It's in the grounds of the Glenfield Hospital in Leicester and it's an acre of walled Victorian garden. In 2008, the garden was left to its own devices. It became a jungle of trees and undergrowth and bushes and nobody really cared for it. But then in 2015-16, the garden was discovered by a lady called Karen James, who since that time have been the project manager and the aim of the Secret Garden Project back in 2016 was to restore this garden with the ethos of being a place of well-being, feeling better, uh, being close to nature. We wouldn't have been able to do that on our own and be able to stand here in the pagoda garden or on the community lawn or in the sensory space and see people enjoy that space as well is quite fulfilling in a way. Quiet in Care Homes is my own project and what I do is to go into 12 care homes over a year 
and have their residents join me in a choir. I know that they can't really go out uh, to say a weekly meeting in a village hall or something um, because a lot of the people are not able to mobilise as good as what they, they would be expected to. I've always wanted to do more for people who live in care homes rather than them just watch television. When I was advised by a friend to, um, to go into this link for this funding from the NHS, I thought, well, I might as well have a go. Um, and I was really, really surprised and really pleased when they, when they chose me. It brings back such a lot of memories to sing some songs from, uh, say, from the 1950s. Hopefully there would be a few people from each care home choir that we could actually get together, all of us, to have a, 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 a care home choir where we could actually have it recorded and hopefully go further with it. In this choir at this particular care home, I can have 18 people, 18 residents in the lounge and right at the back they have a lady that sits in a special chair so she always has to sit in that position and she doesn't talk she's over a hundred what I do is I'll walk down and I'll see I'll sit next to this lady and just say we're going to sing your favorite song all things bright and beautiful and she'll come with this big beaming smile no teeth just showing all the little gums but her eyes sparkle and she said, I like that. They're my diamond moments when that, were, that is worth more to me than if I had something like a diamond. And like, if, if you have a positive mind, you can do anything. And I believe this wellness, well-being exercise definitely creates a positive mind uh, from a, a negative one. Because I talk to people about how they're feeling before and how they're feeling after. Um, and it's lovely that they have an opportunity to be with other people in a safe environment. I would say, because I've gone through a lot, losing my husband and that, and I lost my confidence, I didn't know where to go. And then this came up and I thought, I'll try it. And I love it because it's helped calm me down. And I feel like it's given me a purpose. A practice of yoga and mindfulness that's so simple that can work physiologically if we just take the time to sit, to settle into our breathing, to pay some more attention. We know that these things work now. The research is, is showing, you know, exactly how this happens in the body, exactly what happens in the mind, what happens with the nervous system. But the thing that um, that I've been pleasantly surprised by is the sense of community that's come from this and, and the, the well-being that comes from community. A lot of these initiatives do bring communities together and other people together. I think what we saw was people had some small ideas that they would know make a difference and they just needed that little bit of funds and we were able to provide that. I think what I'm really looking forward to with the next steps is to see how these projects develop and grow and how we nurture them as a system to support future innovation across our system. Following our uh, celebration event, uh, we're actually looking at creating a community of change agents and we want to support our colleagues that have actually worked hard in implementing their projects to continue to build on and sustain the fast and fantastic work that's actually been taken forward. I want to say to the people that are funding it, thank you. And thanks for giving us the opportunity to do these sessions and um, receive them as well. I'd like to thank the LLR and all those that have supported us to reach this point. This gave me a real purpose, to something to look forward to. To, to build upon, to learn, to be part of this family that is soaring. The, the spirit is unique and I'm, I'll be forever grateful for that.